40 years back, if a Pharisee began his journey as one of the very few ecumenical institutions in India committed to theological research and developing leaders, it was the fruit of tireless discussions and efforts on the part of its visionary founders who could sense the need of a theological research body that was ecumenical in spirit, Indian in its essence, and liberative in its mission. Ever since, FFRRC has taken huge strides in his journey to excellence. And the Ruby Year celebration is yet another milestone and a sign of God's faithfulness towards our institution. Honorable dignitaries, respected board members and faculty of FFRRC, beloved alumni, fellow researchers, staff, and all our dear family members. It is with great joy that we have all gathered here for the Ruby Year celebration. On this August occasion, let us take time to celebrate the faithfulness of God who has led us all through the last 40 years. It is also a time to refresh and to cherish all the memories. And indeed, our joy is double because the occasion is falling in the Christmas season. We can all hear Christmas bells ringing around us, making us to ponder the meaning and significance of the birth and life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With these words, let me invite you to this FFRRC Ruby Year celebration and Christmas Carol 2021. I hope and pray that this event will be very memorable and blessed one. We shall begin our program with worship. I would like to call upon the worship team to come and lead in a time of worship. What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I'll pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Let us join together in worshiping the Lord by singing the hymn, O God, our help in ages past. May I request you to please stand.
mountain of life, in you we mortals live and move and have our being. We worship your holy and life-giving name. Christ who sits at the right hand of the Father, above every principality and power, and who, who for the love of humankind came to live among us and share our joys and sorrows, we praise you. O Christ, the eternal one, you chose to be born of a virgin, and the world beheld the glory of the eternal God shining through your tender face at Bethlehem. Through your birth, public ministry, death and resurrection, you opened the channels of divine salvation for the suffering humanity. Sanctifying spirit who nurtures our faith, clarifies our understanding and empowers us for missional engagements in the way of Christ, we shower our praise and adoration to you. O triune God who cannot be fully conceived in the mind, and whose name cannot be fully spoken by our feeble lips, we submit ourselves to you in worship, praise to you now and forevermore. Let us come into the confession. Snow can never emit flame. Water can never issue fire. A thorn bush can never produce a pig. Just so your heart can never be free from oppressive thoughts, words, and actions until it has purified itself internally. Let us confess our thoughts before the merciful God. After each prayer, our response shall be, Merciful God, forgive us our sins. Merciful God, Forgive us our sins. Gracious God, we, we have often been deep to your gentle soft voice that speaks within our hearts in silence and admonishes us. We were impatient to listen to, your, to our brothers and sisters who have strived to teach us lessons of love and wisdom. We have secretly loved the ways of sin and injustice. We have covered our guilt and shortcomings under the grace of pity. Our mouths were filled with the empty bubbling of self-justifying claims. We confess this, our sins. Gracious God, we were aware that theological education is not meant to be an intellectual exercise alone, and that Christian theology aims to form and reform our character towards making us good, compassionate, and righteous human beings. We have known that we will never understand Christ, his proclamation, his ministry, his cross, and his resurrection until we find ourselves where he placed himself in the company of the poor, afflicted, and those who cry out for justice and freedom. However, we have often ignored the summons of theology and we are unwilling to be transformed as God desires for, of us. We confess this our sins. Lord, we did not seriously consider the possibilities that the present pandemic often before us for ministry and witness. We have often disregarded our responsibilities in this time of crisis. In our neighborhood, there were people who had lost their loved ones and were in need of comfort. Men and women who had lost their livelihood and were in need of support, sick and elderly people in need of care and fellowship and children unable to access education and in need of practical help. But we tend not to see those in need and were bothered with our own cares. We confess this our sins. God in his abundant mercy has forgiven the sins of those who have truly repented. He will unable, enable us to keep ourselves unstained by the evil of this world. Amen. Let's take time to thank God. He who has received a gift from God and is ungrateful for it is already on the way to lose it. Now for the following Thanksgiving prayer, our response shall be, the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. 
The Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Gracious Lord, we thank you for inviting us, weak and humble as we are, to participate in the glorious ministry that you are doing in this world. We are aware that as human, we tend to fall unless sustained by the steadfast love of the Lord and that our academic expertise, our rhetorical skill, leadership abilities or influence has its limitations. We stand by your grace. We thank you, O Lord, for the visionaries who had come together 40 years ago to initiate and establish FFRRC, a postgraduate center of theological studies and research, and for all those who offered their prayers and labors to build this institute, for the vision of the founding leaders concerning theological education, ecumenical engagement, and practice of faith, we thank you. We remain grateful for the contribution of Orthodox Theological Seminary, Kotem, Martama Theological Seminary, Kotem, and Kerala United Theological Seminary, Tiruvannamalai, and the churches these institutes represent towards establishing FFRRC. For the present leaders and students of FFRRC who continue to carry the legacy of this institution and work for the realization of its vision, we remain grateful unto you. We thank you, O Lord, for the alumni of this institution who serve God's mission in India and in other places as theological educators and researchers, as missionaries and evangelists, as ministers in the church and leaders in the civil society, and render valuable service for the building of the kingdom of God on this earth. We remain grateful for helping us to be open and available for new possibilities that God has envisaged for FFRRC and for the furtherance of God's mission in this world. The Lord is good. good. We thank you, O Lord, for our country, for the social life that we participate in and its democratic structure, for the rich religious and cultural diversity and natural resources that we are blessed with, for those bold voices of our country, men and women who stand up to affirm dignity and freedom of the vulnerable among us, for those men and women in our midst who continue to do exemplary work as doctors, nurses, health workers, government officials, volunteers for the well-being of a society in this time of pandemic. We thank you for the ministerial engagements of our churches to sustain life in this time of crisis. We thank you. Lord is good, is steadfast now. Let us intercede with God. O Lord, hear our supplications, not according to the poverty of our asking, but according to the riches of your grace, so that our lives may conform to those desires which accord with your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for the center of Sarampur College and all theological institutions affiliated to it, which minister to the cause of theological education in our country. Let us plead unto God that the officers of the Senate, the faculty members, staffs, and students of all theological colleges and seminaries across India may experience God's abundant grace in these endeavors. Let us pray that FFRRC may achieve greater heights in the realm of theological education and ecumenical relations. May it continue to equip people to be committed in faith, to be theologically discerning, to be good interpreters and practitioners of the word of God, to be courageous to stand against evil, and to be diligent in service to the needy. Let us pray that FFRRC would effectively train dedicated leaders for the church and society in the days to come. Let us pray for the Malangra Orthodox Syrian Church, Malangra Marthoma Syrian Church, and the Church of South India, that they may effectively participate in God's mission in these challenging times. Let us pray for all the churches in the Indian subcontinent, which through worship and witness 
glorify the name of the triune God. Let us remember our bishops, priests, deacons, ministers, celebrates and the community of the faithful in prayer. May our churches spread to the world tidings of great joy this Christmas season and in the coming days. Let us pray for the advancement in ecumenical relationship between sister churches. May our churches fulfill the divine mission for which they have been called. Let us remember our nation in prayers. May those in governmental authority and our civil and political leaders strive for the welfare of all communities with all earnestness. Let us remember the victims of the Kunur helicopter tragedy and pray for those grieving the loss of their beloved ones. Let us also remember the bereaved families of the coal miners in Nagaland who met with tragic death in the army ambush. May justice, peace, and harmony prevail in our land. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. This day of daily bread, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. We give us not in the temptation, but deliver us from the kinds of kingdom, the power of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make this face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The blessings of the kind God be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Joseph Jonathan and team for leading us into a time of uh, worship. And now I call upon Reverend Dr. C.I. David Joy, the co-chairperson of FFRC, to lead us into a time of devotion. We shall listen to him on the screen. Most respected heads of the churches, chairman of FFRRC, principals of member institutions, professors, students, friends. As we are gathered here to thank God for the mercies and the supporting hands that God has given us over the years. Ruby Jubilee is a milestone. It's a milestone in terms of celebrating ecumenical theological education in Kerala. Over the years, FFRRC has demonstrated outstanding ecumenical spirit in terms of accommodating various dimensions of theological education. Today, as we are in a liminal point, a liminal moment of history, I would like to meditate on Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 19. Saint Luke, chapter 4, verse 19. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It is a great space, as I mentioned, a space for ecumenical theological education. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor is an announcement. It's a promise, it's a dedication, also it is a commitment. Bishop Tom Wright's recent book, The Day the Revolution Began, is about the crucifixion event of Jesus. I would like to connect that aspect with the 
proclamation of Lord's favor. The story of Jubilee is the story of God's mission to redeem and restore all creation. Federated faculty being a coming together of scholars of this region always promoted God's mission to redeem and restore God's creation. Jubilee principles affirms according to St. Luke God's sovereignty, God's providence, God's promise and ethical parameters given to us through the proclamation of the kingdom of God. Today in view of climate justice, gender equality and racial ethics, Jubilee themes are very very significant. What is our responsibility as a theological community based on this text? Our responsibility is to promote social relationship, liberation from slavery, restoration of our home, restoration of family, restoration of land through our theological education. There is an interesting discussion recently happened and documented in Madhuhumi Weekly initiated by Dr. Vinil Paul and scholars like Dr. George Uman and others joined. It's about the slavery system in Kerala and the liberation brought forward by the gospel. I should also mention Father Dr. K. M. George Achen's devotion given to us at the time of reopening, a devotion that challenged our perspectives, talking about redefining the institutional structures. As we are celebrating Ruby Jubilee, this is the challenge. We need to question some of the institutional structures and move forward, understanding the message of Jubilee. In Jubilee, according to Old Testament, non-Israelites are also included. What is our attitude towards the people of other faith, people of other cultures? In some texts, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, the examples are given, examples of Jubilee application. In Acts, we see the same thing, sharing of resources with other people in different context. Paul in Galatians 3 27 and 28 claims that Christ breaks down other social barriers, male and female, slave and free, Jews and Jedi. Liberation in Jubilee is a life of Christ, a life of love in Christ with others. Tom Wright finally says the Jubilee establishes a new messianic community. Messianic community is a community living according to spirit. But we all follow Adamic community. Adamic community is a community living according to flesh. This is the question and challenge given to the church. Church is a called out community living in the power of the spirit. Church is a community commissioned to bear witness to the gospel. FFRRC has a great responsibility to follow these frameworks. God has been faithful in sustaining the system of FFRRC. What about us? Are we faithful? Ruby Jubilee for us to move forward in Christ with confidence and faith. Let us celebrate our faith. Let us celebrate our faith as messianic community, living according to the spirit. The context of climate ethics, context of gender equality, and the context of racial questions. Let us boldly say, courageously say, we, our Lord is Jesus Christ, who breaks down social barriers. Let us move beyond our conventional and traditional frameworks 
to understand the meaning of transformation to the needy and the poor. May the Lord of this Lord Jesus Christ help us so that we will be able to demonstrate the values of a called out community and the values of a community commission to bear witness to the gospel. Amen. We are grateful to Achan for the message. Ruby, a celebration is a reminder that we need to move beyond into deeper levels of faith and liberative mission. Thank you, Achan. And now I invite our dear registrar, Reverend Dr. Koshi P. Vogis Achan, to give the words of welcome and to present the report. Greetings to you all. Our church is a community on the move in search of truth. The remembrance of any milestone in the history of any institution or individual is the celebration of truth for the posterity. Remembering the past is celebrating the present. Remembering the present is celebrating the future. These are the words of Reverend Dr. M. J. Joseph. It is my honor to welcome you all to this Ruby Year celebration and Christmas carol of FFRRC Cotem. Father Dr. Reggie Matthew, the chairperson of FFRRC and the principal of Orthodox Theological Seminary, is presiding this meeting. Reggie Chen has been appointed as the principal of Orthodox Theological Seminary recently. FFRRC congratulates Achen on this new position and pray that Achen's leadership will enhance the ecumenical relationship between the churches and academic community. We value Achen's leadership given to FFRRC. I welcome Achen to this meeting. We are privileged to have the presence of His Holiness Moro and Basilius Marthoma Matthew III to inaugurate this meeting. The Remini is part of FFRC faculty since many years and doing his teaching responsibility as a committed teacher. The former UN General Secretary, Dag Hamos Dold, prayed as follows. Give me a pure heart that I may hear thee a heart of love that I may serve thee, a heart of faith that I may live thee. Yes, His Holiness Moro and Basilius Martha Matthew III has been trying in his life to realize these spiritual goals through his involvement in the church and society. As a theological educator, professor, ecumenist, chief shepherd, a good host, and above all, an able administrator. There many is not Present with us now will be joining us by 10:45. Thirmeni uh, is for Hvarars. This is a proud moment because while Hvarars is celebrating 40 years of existence, we are celebrating Thirmeni's new responsibility as a Catholic as well. We Hvarars family is proud of Thirmeni, and Thirmeni has very graciously accepted our invitation and made himself available for us this day on behalf of FFRC family in his absence, hoping that he will join us soon. I welcome his holiness, uh, Marthoma Matthews III, to this meeting. His grace, Dr. Theodosius Marthoma Metropolitan is giving the keynote address today. In all his sermons, lectures, and projects, Initiated by His Grace, one may observe Thirmini's radical mission concerns across any religious or cultural divide. Thirmini believes that the negation of life in the form of violence of any sort is a threat to the survival of new humanity. Thirmini has been giving dynamic leadership to the church and initiates and support academic endeavors. Thirmini has very graciously accepted our invitation to deliver 
the keynote address tirumeni is not able to present here because tirumeni is traveling in the state orissa he sent the video message i welcome dr theodosius mars metropolitan tirumeni to this meeting the most reverend a dharmaraj rasalam the moderator of church of south india is is also accept the invitation tirumeni is not able to come he may send his greetings and i will read later his grace combines in himself the simplicity and gentleness of a shepherd and the firmness of an administrator tirumeni is very supportive to the theological education by encouraging clergy to pursue higher studies and giving support of rrc i welcome the most of dharmada rasalam to this meeting metropolitan dr sagaraya smaraprem the president of the senate of sarambur is with us tirumeni is our faculty member and is a president of the senate of sarambur college to which frrc is affiliated saint basil said he who sows courtesy reaps friendship he who plants kindness gathers love this is true with aprem tirumeni tirumeni maintains a friendly attitude to all people with this charisma tirumeni is guiding and leading the senate of sarambur with a clear vision and commitment tirumeni has very graciously accepted our invitation and i welcome sakriya smar apremat tirumeni to our meeting right reverend dr royce manoj victor the bishop of church of south india malabar diocese is attending this meeting online he is a former faculty member of frrc and tirumeni is a council member of the senate of saramb tirumeni is known to us as a theological educator an ecumenist an old testament scholar and an able administrator tirumeni has graciously accepted our invitation and i welcome dr reverend right reverend dr royce manoj victor to this meeting reverend dr david joy is the co-chair person of frrc and principal of kerala united theological seminary trivand achan led the devotion today achan is not in uh, out, i in kerala achan is out of country so i welcome achan to this meeting <laughs> reverend dr vs wari is the co-chair person of frrc and principal of martha mathulik seminary kottayam is participating and giving leadership in this meeting i welcome achan to this meeting father dr sakarias kanyagonil rector of apostolic seminary wadavadu kottayam is with us today achan is a professor of moral theology apostolic seminary has been very supportive to ffrc family from the very beginning especially in extending the library facilities and also the faculty or to the students i welcome father dr sakarya skanya gonil to our meeting Reverend Dr M J Joseph pioneered the federated faculty along with Dr Paulos Mar Gregorios the then principal of Orthodox Theological Seminary Reverend Dr V P Thomas then principal of Martha Mathulu Seminary and Reverend Dr Jacob Vargas the then principal of Kerala United Theological Seminary Trivandrum Joseph Fachen is the first registrar of FFRC the former principal of martha mathulu seminary and the former director of ecc bangalore achan is a stalwart of ecumenism as an ideal teacher he has high regard for his student as he believes what the jewish rabbi hillel said my students are my glory achan is a teacher who takes pride in the progress of his students achan is my guru achan we are grateful to you 
for taking initiative to start this FFRRC 40 years ago. And welcome Achen to this meeting. Reverend Dr. P. L. John Baniker is the former registrar of FFRRC. It was during his time as a registrar of FFRRC, it was celebrated 25th year, and Achen services to FFRRC was commendable. I welcome Achen to this meeting. Dr. Jayashri KB is an alumnus of FFRRC. And now she is the principal of Amazing Grace Bible Seminary, Kotaragara. She is a budding scholar in the field of New Testament. I welcome Dr. Jayashri to our meeting. Dear former and present faculty members of FFRRC, we have been sailing together in this boat since 1980, which is a great witness to the world through mutual respect, understanding, humility, and sacrificial service of the faculty. We maintain this ecumenical spirit without break. I welcome former faculty members, Father Dr. Cam George, Reverend Dr. Kuruvala George, Reverend Dr. Abraham Guruvala, Father Dr. V.P. Vargis, Father Dr. T.A. Vargis, Reverend Dr. K. Abraham, Reverend Dr. Abraham Bilip, Reverend Dr. O. Thomas, Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George, Professor Dr. Joseph Vargis, Professor K.C. George, Reverend Dr. Sunny Matthew, Reverend Dr. Sabu Philip, Professor Dr. Susan John and family, and all who are participating in the meeting online to this meeting. I welcome the present faculty members. The faculty is the backbone of FFRRC. I welcome the treasurer, Reverend Dr. Vibin Lal LV, the Dean of MD Studies, Reverend Dr. Joseph Daniel, the Dean of Doctor Studies, Father Dr. Nainanga Jor, and all the executive committee members, and all the dear present the faculty members to this meeting. Our MDH and DTS students are with us, and alumni of FFRC also with us. They are the strength of FFRC, and they represent different denominations across India. I welcome all the uh, student community to this meeting. Representatives of BD students from Kannamuela Seminary, Deacon Pranoy K. Abraham and Mabel Joseph, and also students from OTS and students from Martha Mathur Seminary are attending this meeting. The office staff are also attending. I welcome you all to this meeting. Let me present a brief report of FFRS. The Federal Faculty for Research in Religion and Culture in Kerala is a pioneering ecumenical venture among the theological fraternity under the Senate of Sarambur College. FFRC was founded as a joint program of the Orthodox Theological Seminary Cotton, the Martha Theological Seminary Cotton, and the Kerala United Theological Seminary Thiruvananthapuram, sponsored by the Orthodox Church, the Martha Church, and the Diocese of South, South India in Kerala. In the mid 1970s, the theological fraternity in Kerala explored the possibility of setting up a postgraduate theological faculty in Kerala. The first meeting of an exploratory committee consisting of delegates from the St. Thomas Apostolic Seminary, Vanavadu, Martama Theological Seminary, Kortayam, Orthodox Theological Seminary, Kortayam, and Kerala Unique Theological Seminary, Trivandrum, was held at the Sophia Center of Orthodox Seminary. But on July 30th, 1977, Dr. T. V. Philip, then director of the Senate, also attended the deliberations. In 1979, formal application for affiliation signed by Dr. Paulos Mar Gregorios, principal of OTS, OTS 
and Dr. V. P. Thomas Sachin, principal of MTS, and uh, Reverend Dr. Jacob Varis, principal of KUTS, was submitted to the Registrar of Sanjay Saramra College. The Evaluation Commission, appointed by the Committee on Academic Affairs, visited the seminaries in November 1979 and submitted its report to the CAA of Saramra. The Evaluation Commission report was presented to the Senate meeting held, in, held on February 1st, 1980 at Tamil Nadu Theological Seminary. The Senate of the Sarambur College recognized FFRRC as a postgraduate center for theological education and granted affiliation at the MDS level and permitted FFRRC to begin Master of Theology courses in the branches of Old Testament, New Testament and Christian theology from the academic year 1980 to 81. The FMRRC was formally inaugurated on July 3rd, that 1980, on the St. Thomas Bay. His grace, the most reverend Dr. Paulus Margrigorius Metropolitan was the first chairman, along with the Reverend Dr. V. P. Thomas and Reverend Dr. Jacob Varis, who served as the co-chairman, and Reverend Dr. M. J. Joseph as the registrar. In the academic year 1988-89, FFRRC began offering MDS degree courses in the history of Christianity, and in 1917-98 in religions, FFRRC introduced two other MDS courses on early teachers of faith, Protestant studies, and liturgical theology within the branch of Christian theology from the academic year 1999-2000. In the academic year 2004, FFRRC began MDS pastoral counseling, and in 2014, mission studies. From 1986, FFRRC had been a doctoral center until the formation of the South Asia Theological Research Institute, Satri, in 1989, which since then had been functioning as the only doctoral center under Sarambur University till the decision to recognize Satri and restart regional centers for doctoral studies in 1999. The Senator Sarambur College, which met on 5th of February 1999, recognized FFRRC as a regional doctoral center under Satri and granted permission to begin doctoral program in the branches of Old Testament, New Testament, Christian theology, and history of Christianity. In 2010, the Senate of Sarambur College granted permission to begin DTS program in pastoral counseling. FFRRC also provide opportunity to undertake the non-degree research program and encourage scholars to enroll in this program. The general body of FFRRC, which met on 30th June 1999, decided to start the non-degree program, research program, the encourage scholars to be enrolled in this program. FMRRC continues its academic journey as an ecumenical platform to provide facilities for theological education, leading to postgraduate and doctoral degrees, and also for non-degree research programs all across India. Activities of the uh, of FRRC of the year 21-22. Reopening service. The reopening service of FRRC was conducted online on Monday, July 1921. And Reverend Dr. Justin Moses, the acting registrar of the Senator Sarambur, gave the message. Students' body. This year, we have admitted 21 students for MDH and five students for DTH. Total strength of students in, in MDH is 38. For DTH, 23 in the three-year-long residential program. There are 20 DTS scholars who continue their work after completing the three-year residential period. We have 20 core faculty members and 11 visiting faculty members. MDS orientation class. MDS orientation class was held from 7 to 14 July 21 online. DTS orientation class. DTS orientation class was held from 20 to 23 July 21 via Zoom platform. Research methodology course. The Satri conducted research methodology course from 24th May to 5th June 21. Our research scholars participated this program online. 
executive committee and the annual general body meeting the executive committee and the annual general body meeting was held on 31st august 21 at mdts the new office bearers the new office bearers took charge from 31st august 21 research seminar FFRC conducted a research seminar on 20th october at OTS, both offline and online dr jan c james the former vice chancellor of md university delivered a talk on the topic an integral vision of research prospects and possibilities and our ci david joy delivered a talk on politics and ethical issues in theological research national seminar the satri conducted a national seminar on 25th october 21 online on the topic mental health in the covid 19 pandemic our students joined the seminar and participated in the discussion our dta student Mrs. Thawachala Jamir was one of the respondents of the seminar paper. Appreciation. Our faculty member, Metropolitan Dr. Matthews Marcellorius, has been elevated as the Malangara Metropolitan and Catholicos of the East of Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church. FFRC family expresses our appreciations and congratulations to Thirimi. Thirimi, we have already welcomed you. So now again, I welcome the remaining to our midst. Sarambur Commission visit. A yes, Sarambur Commission consisting of the President, Metropolitan Dr. Sakarya Smara Prem, the Acting Director, Reverend Dr. Justin Moses, the Dean of Research, Reverend Dr. Limachala Longkumar, and the Acting Secretary of BTESSC and Dean of Sector, Reverend Dr. Rodi Mavia Ralte, visited FFRRC and met students and faculty on 12, 13 November 21. DTS is submission. This year, our three students, Reverend V.M. Matthew, Mr. Akhyam Mule, and Father Thomas George, submitted their thesis to the Senate and waiting by our seat. Reverend Daniel Josea and Mr. Amrithraj Joshua Paul submitted their revised thesis proposal and waiting for why our seat. DTS thesis proposal seminar. This academic year, we conducted four DTS thesis proposal seminars, and the faculty accepted the proposals. MDS thesis proposal seminar. MDS thesis proposal seminar was conducted on 15th and 16th November 21. Student seminar. In this academic year, we started the student seminar on 12th October 21, and it is going on well, going on in a well manner. Sarambur convocation. Sarambur Convocation. The Sarambur Convocation was held on 4th December 21, and there were 26 MDS students received MDS certificates, and there were two DTS students, Reverend Deepan Varghese, Reverend Matthew K. Madalali, received a doctoral degree. FFRC congratulates the students for their achievement. Our three students, Mr. Toshi Chen Chen, History of Christianity, Reverend Deepan Varghese, History of Christianity, Dr. Mahathikya Malala, Christian Ministry, defended their thesis and were awarded a degree of Doctor of Theology during the Sarambur Convocation held on 4th, December 21. We congratulate them for their achievements. <clears throat> MDS first semester examination. MDS college examinations were held from 6th to 13th December 21. Administrative office and hostels. The administrative office continues to function in the campus of the Martha Mathalika Seminary. Martha Math Seminary has set apart office facilities in the new administrative block free of cost for the FRC office, thanks to the Martha Math Seminary. Orthodox Logic Seminary provides spaces for our various meetings and seminars. We are thankful to Martha Math Seminary, Orthodox Logic Seminary, and KUT Seminary for providing the hostel rooms and library facilities for our students. Thanks. I thank the chairperson co-chairpersons, the treasurer, the deans of studies, the executive committee members, and all the faculty members of FRRC for the great support in the smooth functioning of this institution. Mrs. Darley George has been doing the duties efficiently in the FRRC office. The FRRC places on record keep gratitude to her. The office staff of Marthama Seminary, office staff of Orthodox Seminary, and KD Seminary also are very helpful in coordinating administrative matters. Thank you very much to all. Thank you, Ajahn, for those kind words of welcome and for presenting the report.
And now I would like to invite the chairperson of FFRC, Father Dr. Reggie Matthew Achen, to give the presidential address. Glory be to the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one true God. Your Eminence, Mark Basilios, Mark Thoma, Matthews III. Your Grace, Dr. Sekrias Mar Aprem, the President of the Senate of Serambu. The Co-Chairman of the FFRRC. The Registrar, Reverend Koshipi Vargis the former principals, registrars, faculty members, the students and the staff of all the three seminaries and my dear friends. It's a matter of joy and pride for me personally to be the chairman of the FFRRC during this celebration. We have come through 40 long years. 40 is a biblical number, right from the story of the Exodus up to the 40 days fast of Jesus Christ. We see the number in the Bible. It's a remarkable number, and we are crossing a milestone in the history of the FFRRC. I belong to the seventh batch of FFRRC as an MTS student. I was a New Testament student and my thesis guide was uh, the most respected MJ Joseph Hutchin. And I remember during my BD years too, how the FFRRC was formed. The hard work of the three principals of our seminaries, His Grace, Dr. Paulus Mar Gregorius of Glorious Memory, Reverend Dr. V.P. Thomas, and later on, Reverend Dr. K.V. Matthew, and uh, Reverend Dr. Jacob Varghese of the Kandamula KUTS Seminary. Reverend Dr. M.J. Joseph was the very first registrar of the FFRRC who could uh, materialize the framework in which we are still functioning after 40 years. And we had a lot of eminent personalities as chairmen, registrars, and faculty members. In our church, the reading for the next Sunday's gospel portion is the genealogy of Christ. St. Matthew chapter 1, 1 to 17, and Luke chapter 3, uh, 23 to 38. It may look as meaningless names in the very first sight. But when you examine carefully, we see that it is a summary of the history of Israel. It is a summary of the history of salvation of the people of God. Similarly, the big names, the great names, the FFRC, they tell us a lot of stories. Stories of the troubles, stories of joy, and stories of achievements. And we all are thankful to God that even after 40 years, all the three seminaries were working together, close and knit together without any murmur, any debate, any dispute. We work together as brothers and witnesses in Jesus Christ. So that is, I think that is one of the greatest witness of the ecumenical journey of Christian churches. Many people who work in the ecumenical movement may talk about ecumenical winter. Nothing happens. No summer is there. No flower is there. Many critics are there. But we can gratefully say, no, there is no ecumenical winter in Kerala. We have ecumenical summer. After 40 years of witnessing Christ in this part of the world, belonging to two, three different uh, confessions. We respect each other, we support each other, 
and we carry together each other so that is one of the uh, greatest achievement in the history of ffrc many scholars of india new testament old testament history of christianity ministry they were trained in this institution we were working in three different campuses when we were students we were working uh, we attended classes in vadavadu seminary also our father kanya konal is here uh, as a representative of the vadavadu apostolic seminary uh, we were attending classes of uh, the uh, great new testament scholar uh, father matthew velanikel and uh, we were traveling to trivandrum to attend classes of kurivula george atchen who is also present here in our midst and uh, uh, reverend jacob burgis and uh, these are glorious memories in the history of ffrc there are uh, i would like to uh, invite your attention to uh, two metaphors used by the christian teachers of early history one is that of clement of alexandria he uses the metaphor of the beast in his writing the paideia and he says the bees they visit each and every flower but on some occasions on certain flowers it spends more time to squeeze out the honey out of the flower similarly the research scholars of the orthodox marthoma csi baptist presbyterian pentecostal assemblies of god all these research scholars come here attend classes of different uh, teachers uh, who belong to different confessions confessions and squeeze out the honey uh, that they uh, find in the class rooms of all these uh, scholars the, uh, so the training of theological teachers uh, we have produced a lot of uh, theologians all over india and that is one of the greatest things that we have to remember secondly we are witnesses to ecumenism there i want to invite your attention to another metaphor which was used by irenius of lions he used the metaphor of symphony when there is a symphony different musical instruments are used guitar violin tabla drums different musical instruments are used individually they sound differently individually we may think they don't work together but when there is a harmony there there evolves a symphony of all these instruments and a beautiful hymn will come out similarly in the ffrc we could bring out harmonious relationships we could bring out theologies and we could support the young theologians who come came here with a lot of dreams and we were trying to support them to transform their vision about the church about the world and about the people of god i wish all success to the ffrc in future too thank you very much for patiently hearing me glory to the name of god thank you dear achan for the speech and for sharing the memories and thank you for the beautiful metaphors and uh, that you brought out thank you i believe it sets the pace for our celebration and we are greatly honored to have with us his holiness basilios marthoma matthews third who is the malangara metropolitan and catholicos of the east of malangara orthodox syrian church thank you so much tirmani for being with us and for gracing this occasion and now i call upon reverend dr v s vargis achan the co chairperson of ffrc to uh, felicitate our dear tirumeni dear reverends the catholic baba tirumeni your grace sakrias mara prem tirumeni the chairman of the meeting and of ffrc father dr reggie matthew the registrar of ffrc former principals of the seminaries former registrars of ffrc and your friends 
it is indeed a proud moment for FFRRC. Many of our alumni were elevated to the status of metropolitan or bishops. But this is the first time, in my knowledge, one of the members of our faculty elevated to the highest office of the church. Our Matthias Marcellarius Tirumeni, former current faculty member, elevated to the position of the Catholicos of the East and the Metropolitan, Malangara Metropolitan of the Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church. It is indeed a proud moment for us. Tirumeni was born on February 12, 1947, a member of the St. Peter's Church, Varu. After Tirumeni's school education, he joined Kerala University and got his bachelor's degree in chemistry. And after his BSc studies and completion of BSc degree, Tirumeni joined the Orthodox Theological Seminary for his theological studies and earned the BD degree from Sarambur University. And he did his high studies in theology at Theological Academy, Leningrad, Russia. And then he joined the Oriental Institute Rome and took his MTH and PhD from there. Tirumeni was ordained as a deacon in 1976 and as a bishop in 1978. And Tirumeni was elevated to the post of Episcopal on April 30, 1991. And Tirumeni assumed the office of the Malangara Metropolitan and the Catholicos of the East on 15th October 2021. And on behalf of the FFRRC community, we congratulate Tirumeni for Tirmeni's elevation as the Malangara Metropolitan and the Catholicos of the East. And as the principal of Marthoma Theological Seminary, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Tirmeni to Marthoma Theological Seminary on behalf of the faculty and students. I welcome Tirmeni to Marthoma Theological Seminary. As a theologian and an academician, Tirumeni is rendering a significant contribution to the intellectual life of theological academia in India. For the last many decades, Tirumeni was involved in the process of training priests, theologians, and theological education with utmost zeal and utmost commitment. Tirumeni is committed most of his life to theological education. As an academician and theological educator, he challenged many to deeply delve into the rich and varied theological trajectories, and especially challenging students to delve into the articulation, especially related to Christological debates and Christological discussions during the early seven centuries. And Tirumeni engaged in ministry and challenged students to engage in ministry with self-respect and cultivate an unending passion and commitment to Christ and his body, the church. As a faculty member at FFRC, Tirumeni is still serving as the faculty member. He served as a mentor to many theological students and researchers from diverse ecclesiastical, linguistic, cultural, and geographical background. He never compromised on the importance of academic scholarship and neither allowed students to compromise with the research. As a self-disciplined person, a person, a man with prayer life, he is always an ascetic presence among us, at the same time, an intellectual presence. He combined his deeply rooted sense of service to others with an irradicable impression on all. As Metropolitan, his care for the community and the church is well reflected in the activities he took as the Metropolitan of the Condenat Diocese and the other dioceses. The hermeneutical approach the Remaini took towards the text and the debates clearly illustrates his commitment and vision for the future of the church. The FFRRC community is proud of the Remaini. And we pray to the triune God. May continue, God continue to bless Tirumeni to guide the church 
in a mirror where we are living it is usually represented or we always call it as new normal or post normal situation where contradictions and chaos and confusion are often marks of the society at present we pray that under tirumeni's leadership the church may continue to grow to further the cause of the kingdom of god on behalf of the frc community i congratulate and appreciate tirumeni for your elevation as the catholicos of the east i request reverend dr b s pandey sachin to uh, please uh, honor our tirumeni with a shawl and i also request reverend john philip achan to present the memento and now i request a beloved tirumeni his holiness basilios matoma matthews iii to lighten the lamp and inaugurate the ruby year celebration shall we all stand Glory be to the eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have a prayer to remain in the. the uh, the president of the sarampur senate and the chairman of the ffrc program all the relevant teachers of the ffrc and our students who are present here It gives me a very elevated felicitation from this ecumenical gathering.
when we are celebrating the ruby year of the FFRRC. I think people like M.J. Joseph Hutchin may be having the same years of experience in the FFRRC. I joined the FFRRC only in 1984, two years after the uh, beginning of the FFRRC. It was really a blessing for me because I had my higher education in Russia and uh, in Rome, where I could uh, meet with the church traditions and uh, administrations of the Byzantine tradition and also the Latin tradition. But when I came to FFRRC, it was really an opening for me to join with the ecumenical program to cooperate with the teaching assignments given to me. And it was really very eye-opening to receive various viewpoints of other denominations of the Christendom. from the southern part of Kerala, even to the north east of the uh, parts of the world, I mean, for India. I had very good relations with the students from the Far East, especially from Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, and other places. And uh, there was some occasions even to visit those places. I do remember our principals all together went to Nagaland Assam and uh, spending one week together there. And since our principal, Paulus Mar Gregorios at that time was not able to go, I was representing him. And that was a glorious opportunity to meet with the Baptist Church in Nagaland and also other churches there, I mean, denominations there. So I could see how people worship in different ways and different attitude and different ways of presenting their love to his God. And also it was really a blessing for me to teach students from all the denominations, especially Baptist Lutherans from the Mathoma CSI, Pentecostal, and all other denominations who came to FFRRC. They always had a very comfortable situation. The students could understand many things from other denominations. And there was an exchange of mind, exchange of their ideas. And that was not a, not in a debating or quarreling mentality, but an open mindedness to accept beliefs of others and practices of others and to understand their meaning, what those practices really meant. That was really an eye opening to students as well as to the teachers. 
and that I find a very good effort from our FFRRC movement. Really, we are moving in a in a economical world. We have many things to do more. We have trained many teachers, many bishops, many other uh, leaders of the churches in various parts of the world. And I was visiting some time in U.S. Some of my students who were there serving as parish priests in the Mathoma Mathoma churches, their parishes there, they came to meet me. They came to know that I was there. That was really a very good opportunity or a very comfortable period to have their company and their uh, response to what they received in the FFRRC program. So I was blessed to all these days, all these years, I mean, to have the company of teachers and students from various other denominations so that I could have a very new vision and new understanding of Christendom as a whole. And that was an experience rather than uh, studying for our books and other. Even though I was late to the worship here today, I could see the worship book and uh, it kind of, and uh, the second stance of the worship book which is in your view. It touched me. Beneath the shadow of thy throne, the saints have dealt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Really, we depend on God's guidance. And God's guidance really Enlighten us and uh, enfreshes us. And his God is always for our this defense. I was remembering the words of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. God's guide, God's arm is behind my life. God is with me. Yeah, thank you. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. And shall say, destroy them. And Underneath are the everlasting arms. The eternal God is the refuge. These words many times comforted me when I was going through some challenging situations in life. That is why I remember always the words. That is what I mean from beneath the shadow of thy throne, the saints do secure. Moses is expressing his security under the arms of God. God is there and God guides. And the FFRRC is guided by God. Behind the FFRRC or under the Underneath the FFRRC, there is or there are the everlasting arm of God. That is why it is progressing. It could survive for the last 40 years. And now we have many things to do in this, uh, in this world. 
This is a new ecumenical program. If I start to say something in a different way, excuse me, this ecumenical program, FFRRC, should not only limit to the classroom education, but it should equip the students to go into the society and to wipe the tears of the people in the society. That type of an education orientation should come from the FFRRC, I mean. That means together we can do many things in this world. Together we can, do, we, we, we could train students for becoming teachers and bishops and other, other uh, offices. But now we, I think, or I, I wish that this, the FFRRC stood, uh, should start a new dimension in, his, in its uh, mission in the world. It should start training students, not only to become professors, but to become lovers of the mankind, to show mercy to the suffering thousands and thousands of people in the streets and other parts. That orientation will make the FFRRC more colorful in the society, and that will bless our work and our so our mission more fruitful in the society. I hope that will come one day. And I pray for that. Wish you all the best. And with all your uh, uh, felicitations and also all your presence, I'm grateful to you. I inaugurate the program with all your prayers. Thank you and pray for me. Thank you, Tirmeni, for inaugurating the event with your blessings and for sharing your memories. Uh, Tirmeni has given us a challenge that we need to take what we learn in the classroom down to the people. Thank you, Tirmeni, for being with us. And our beloved Tirmeni is, uh, has another meeting, so uh, Tirmeni has to go. And uh, thank you once again, Tirmeni, for your presence. It is a delight to have His Grace the most reverend Dr. Theodosius Marthoma, the Metropolitan of Malankara, Marthoma Syrian Church. Our Tirimeni will give the keynote address and we will be listening to the message on the screen. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The most respected Basilius Martha Matthews III, <clears throat> the Catholicos of the East, and the Supreme Head of the Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church, Dr. Sakriya Smar Aprem Metropolitan, the President of the Senate of Sarambu, other dignitaries, respected clergy, the faculty and students of FFRC, I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed a happy occasion for all of us as we celebrate the Ruby Jubilee of the Federated Faculty for Research in Religion and Culture. This is an important milestone in the ministry of this joint venture by the Orthodox Theological Seminary, Kotem Martama Theological Seminary, and the Kerala United Theological Seminary, Thiruvandavaram. I congratulate the Registrar of FRC, 
the principals, teaching and non-teaching staff and students of all the three seminaries on this special day and pray for God's blessings for a fruitful ministry in the field of theological higher education. Friends, today we are blessed to have the presence and leadership of our Vesalius, Martha, Ma, Matthews, Trudy and Baba Trimeli with us. As a well-known scholar and faculty member of the Orthodox Theological Seminary Kottam, Trimeli is very dear to all of us and he is a part of this FFRC program. Trimeli is blessing us today by inaugurating this Ruby Jubilee celebration. Also, I acknowledge the presence of Dr. Sakriyas Ma Aprim Thirimeni, the Metropolitan of the Adu Karnamanad Diocese of the Orthodox Church and the President of the Senate of Sarambu. Thirimeni has also made a very good contribution in the field of theological education. On this auspicious occasion, I remember with gratitude all the pioneers and leaders in the past who founded and nurtured this joint venture over the years. People like Dr. Paulus Margregorius, Principal Orthodox Theological Seminary, Reverend Dr. V. P. Thomas, Principal of the Matama Theological Seminary, Reverend Dr. Jacob Vergis, Principal of the KUT Seminary Thiruvandavaram, and Dr. T. V. Philip, then Director of the Senate, are of special mention here. It was on the St. Thomas Day in 1980, the FFRC was founded as a joint program sponsored by the Orthodox Church, the Mahatma Church and the Church of South India in Kerala. This is an initiative where the three mainland churches and its theological institutions in Kerala to bring about meaning and ecumenical participation in the field of theological education. In fact, it is a pioneering ecumenical venture among the theological fraternity under the Senate of Sarambu College. It is open to all theological colleges or institutions under the Senate of Sarambu. It transcends the boundaries of ecclesiastical stratification and that, that's the beauty of it. FFRC provides facilities for higher theological learning and theological research and promoting theological education, leading to postgraduate and doctoral degrees and also for non-degree research programs. This is an academic venture committed to promote theological, philosophical, hermeneutical, ecumenical discussions and discourses in order to disseminate epistemological and methodological innovations. The ecumenical faculty combines in itself the rich heritage of the three churches which have Eastern and Western traditions. This is an academic community comprises not only members of the Episcopal churches but people from different faith communities irrespective of caste creed, confessions, ethnicity, and gender distinctions and discriminations. We need to give thanks to God for enabling us to do this venture. The academicians and researchers widen their epistemological horizons with the advanced theological and ecumenical categories from various academic sources. This kind of academic enterprises constructs a space for ecumenical learning and missiological engagements. As a center for higher theological learning, FFRC envisions to creatively engage with the academia, both secular and theological, exemplifying the theologizing process in the Indian context by entering into a dialogue with the religio, political, socio cultural, and ideological polyphonies and particularities. As Harvey Cox put it, 
Theology is that activity by which human beings relate their faith in God, Theos, to the patterns of meaning that prevail in any historical period or culture, Logos. The shift from a modern to a postmodern culture brings a new understanding of self and the world with it. Theology has to reflect on the implications of this new understanding of the self and the world for a Christian understanding of reality as revealed in the Holy Bible. In FFRC, we should collectively be reflecting on the dimensions of this cultural shift that is occurring and then reflect on the challenges and opportunities that they offer to theologians. The church and the theological education can never identify themselves with any culture or socio-economic order. Neither can they reside outside culture or orders of different kinds. Cultures and orders present both opportunities and dangers for the church and theology. The postmodern culture is no exception. The transition from the modern to the postmodern culture brings the prospect of exciting and challenging theological deliberation with it. It is my prayer, dear friends, that FFRC in the coming years will rise to face the theological challenges around us and to train theologians for God's mission on earth. I wish your efforts all success and blessings, dear friends. Also, I wish you all a very blessed and merry Christmas and a happy new year. May God bless us all. We are deeply grateful to Athirimeni for the message. And it is also a joy for us to have His Grace, the Most Reverend A. Dharmaraj Rasallam, Moderator Church of South India. And our Thirmeni will give the words of blessings. Since Athirimeni is not here, uh, Thirmeni's words will be shared to us by Reverend Dr. Koshi P. Vagi Sachin. To be here. So they may send a message and I will read that. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me immense pleasure to learn that FFRRC is celebrating Ruby Jubilee today. I take this time to appreciate the chairperson, co-chairpersons, faculty, students and the staff for your continued efforts in leading theological education at the higher level in the state of Kerala, even as being open to various cultural and linguistic groups across the country. On this very special day in the life of the FFRRC, I would like to bring special wishes from the Synod of the Church of South India. Every day of observance calls for two things. One is to look back with gratitude the ways in which God has led us through history. And secondly, it calls us towards imagining the ways to move forward. As a federal body of the Orthodox Church, the Marthama Church, the Church of South India in Kerala, FFRC finds its foundation and derives its inspiration in ecumenism. I thank God Almighty for the continued blessings that He has been show showed upon this institution in sustaining unity through research and scholarship all through these 40 years. As we move on towards Golden Jubilee in a decade, I think this is a time for us to imagine and envision the future. As we seem through the troubled waters in the present day context, Responsibility of the institutions of higher education and research like FFRRC is immensely important. Please remember, you are the think tank of the churches from, every, from where new directions of mission and ministry emerge. Please take the responsibility with this deserving seriousness. We read in the Proverbs, quote, where there is no vision, the people perish, in God. Friends, it is to this prophetic task theological communities are called today. Being the scholarly body of the church, it is to the wisdom of such institutions that the people of God look to in times of uncertainties. Scholarship in Christian community is a commitment, a life commitment, I would say. It is upon the scholarly commitment of the early fathers of the church who instituted the ecumenical councils and those who have interpreted faith in the changing times 
that you find the ground of our faith and doctrines. And this is your turn. Do not buy away as the socio-political premises of the nation changes and the pandemic does not seem to be easily overcome. Christian faith and models of mission and ministry requires to be reinterpreted and you are called to do that. I conclude by referring to a small verse in the episode to Titus 2.1, I quote, but as, you are, as for you, teach what is consistent with sound doctrine and God. Teach what is consistent with sound doctrine. As teachers of faith, I urge the scholarly community of the FFRRC to hold on to faith, even as the landscape of theological education in India is changing. Let the church in India look to your research and scholarship for new directions in the days to come. Let it be the motive and motivation for you in the coming decade. May God bless you all. Amen. We are thankful to our dear Tirumeni for the words of blessings. We are truly blessed to have the presence of many dignitaries in this August occasion. We recognize and appreciate your valuable presence. And now some of the representative dignitaries will offer their words of greetings and felicitations. We have with us Reverend Dr. M.J. Joseph Achan, who is one of the founders of FFRRC. He served the institution as the first registrar of FFRRC and played a vital role in shaping our institution. I'm sure his experience and memories will be very valuable for us. Dear Achan, please take your time. Respected and esteemed dignitaries on the dais and friends. I am indeed grateful to Reverend Dr. Koshi P. Varghese, the registrar of the FFRRC for asking me to give a brief, brief felicitation message on the occasion of the Ruby Year celebration of the FFRRC scheduled for today. What had happened at the formation of the FFRRC 40 years ago is a new experiment in ecumenism, which is the realization of the ecumenical dictum, think globally and act locally. The worldwide Christian umbrella of WCC giving shelter to 350 churches was started as a lay movement, whereas the ecumenical and the theological umbrella of FFRRC was started as a seminary movement by clergy for doing theology in the context of God's oikos. It was inaugurated on July 3rd in the year 1980 at the MDHS Auditorium Kotayam. Professor Sukumar Ariko, the well-known literary writer, delivered the keynote address. In the presence of the three ecclesiastical heads of the Federated Colleges, the Orthodox Theological Seminary Kotayam, the Marthoma Theological Seminary Kotayam, and the Kerala United Theological Seminary Trivandrum. The FFRRC souvenir published on the occasion of its inauguration will speak for itself. The messages from His Holiness, Basilios, Marthoma, Matthews, first of the Orthodox Syrian Church, the Most Reverend Dr. Alexander Marthoma Metropolitan of the Marthoma Church, Right Reverend I. Jeshudasan of the Church of South India, Professor V. K. Sukumarin Nair, Vice Chancellor of Kerala University, Professor Dr. M. E. Paili, Vice Chancellor of the Cochin University, and Reverend D. S. Satyaranjan, Registrar, Senate of Sarambar College, had made the event colorful and historical. Reverend Dr. K. M. George of the Orthodox Theological Seminary, third 
as the editor of the souvenir. Let me now unravel my scroll of remembrance as the convener, the first registrar, and then one of the chairpersons of the FFRRC between 1978 and 1989. I have written my reminiscences of the FFRRC in the commemorative volume. As a Chinese proverb, proverb goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. The genesis of the FFRRC goes back to the proposal of the then director of the Senate, Professor Dr. T. V. Philip, who had organized a meeting of the young theologians under the research department of the Senate on July 27, 1977, at the Sophia Center Orthodox Seminary Kotayam. The proposal was pursued by the three federated colleges under the care of the then principals, Metropolitan Dr. Paulos Mar Gregorios, Principal Orthodox Theological Seminary, and Reverend Dr. Jacob Vargis, Principal KUT Seminary Trivandrum, and Reverend Dr. V.P. Thomas, Principal Marthoma Theological Seminary Kotayam. I had the privilege to serve as its convener. The cooperation of the St. Thomas Apostolic Seminary, Vadavadu, particularly Father Dr. Matthew Vellanigal, was indeed a source of inspiration and help. May I take this opportunity to pay our homage to the departed stalwarts of the FFRRC, Metropolitan Dr. Paulus Margigorius, Bishop Dr. P. G. Kurula, Professor Dr. T. V. Philip. Reverend Dr. V. P. Thomas, Father Dr. V. C. Samuel, Father K. M. Alexander, and others. As listed in the invitation letter of the Registrar, there are six major periods in the growth of the FFRRC, offering MDH and DTH programs to the Senate. The initiative of the Federated Colleges without any centralized system by sharing their theological resources, faculty and library has become a model for the millions of other federated colleges in India. The move was well appreciated in the meetings of the Congress of Asian Theologians, CATS and other ecumenical circles. The Ruby Year celebration is a unique occasion for the Indian churches to thank God with a grateful with a heart full of gratitude. The candidates enrolled have the freedom to stay within the vicinity of the federated colleges. In its early period, the FFRRC candidates had the freedom to stay in any of the federated colleges. Reverend Dr. R. C. Thomas of the Barthoma Church is to be appreciated for his earnestness to stay in the Orthodox Theological Seminary for two years for, two, for his MDA studies in Christian theology. He speaks highly of his rich experience there. It is indeed great that the FFRRC has an office of its own located at the Barthoma Theological Seminary with its constitutional obligation for the change of the post of the director, registrar among the federated colleges with its constitutional obligation for the change of the post of the registrar among federated colleges. The principals of the federated colleges serve as the chairpersons of the FFRRC. It is a joy to recognize the presence of Father Dr. Reggie Matthew in our midst, who was an alumnus of the FFRRC and currently one of the chairpersons of FFRRC and principal of the Orthodox Theological Seminary. Indeed, great that the Reverend Dr. V.S. Vargis, the principal of the Marthoma Theological Seminary, was a former registrar of the Federated FFRRC. Hitherto, the spirit of cordiality has prevailed among the faculty and students as a distinguishing hallmark of 
ecumenical pluralism. The enrollment of the students for MTS, DTH, and non-degree research programs from all over India across church denominations is to be regarded as an ecumenical miracle in the pursuit of theological education in India. May I also recall that the Silver Jubilee celebration of the FFRRC as a seminar session work registered by Reverend Dr. John Panikar, the then registrar of the FFRRC at the Marthama Theological Seminary. I was also invited to be present. The late and lamented Right Reverend Giver Ismar Thanishis Episcopa was the chief guest of the day. In, <clears throat> in the annual visit of the Federated FFRRC candidates, under the care of their faculty members to the Ecumenical Christian Center Bangalore for two to three days has also added a feather in the cap of ECC and of the FFRRC. The FFRRC is functioning since 1986 under the Satri of the Senate of Sarambar College. I am indeed happy to say that the former faculty member of the FFRRC his Holiness, Metropolitan Basilius Marthama Matthews III, and the President of the Senate of Sarambar College Metropolitan, Dr. Sakri Asmar Aparim, have graced this gathering with their presence, along with the former registrars, several former students, and faculty members of FFRRC. The messages given by the heads of the Marthama and the CSI churches is a clear indication of the genuine participation of their respective churches in the cause of FFRRC. May I wish that the challenges of the new normal in the post-pandemic era should be reflected theologically and ecumenically in the academic program of the FFRRC. We have miles to go in our ecumenical search for relevance in the contemporary society. There are quite a few objectives in the original proposal to be realized for a better and common tomorrow. Remember, when you focus on problems, you will have more problems. When you focus on possibilities, you will have more opportunities. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear Rachel, for sharing your memories and for taking us to the journey of FFRC. And we are so glad to have the presence of Father Dr. Zekrias Kanyakonil, Achan, uh, Rector of Apostolic Seminary, Vadavadur. Or dear Achan will give felicitations. Your Grace, Dr. Sakriyas Mar Ephraim, Dr. Reggie Matthew, Chairperson of FFRC, Dr. Koshi P. Vargis, Registrar of FFRC, other respected dignitaries on the stage, faculty members, and students. It's with great joy yesterday I heard from Reverend Dr. Koshi regarding the Ruby Jubilee of FFRC. I have just gone through the brochure, especially the master's program of this uh, FFRC. It is well organized and you have a wonderful program of different department. I also heard from the faculty that now you, uh, uh, past we have a collaboration with the Vadavadu Seminary regarding the library. Now you have a wonderful library and the students are doing the uh, excellent research. Dear friends, what the Ruby Jubilee of this FFRC asked each and every one of us, let's do a deep level of research and contribute our best to our particular church and to whole world. Staff and students of St. Thomas Apostolic Seminary, 
wishing you all the best and let's work together to proclaim the gospel value to each and every one thank you very much thank you achan for your words and we have with us reverend dr john panikar the former registrar of frc and former professor of old testament at frc and religion sorry i'm sorry and representing the office bearers of frc our dear achan will offer his felicitations His Grace, His Grace, Dr. Sakriyas Ma Aprem, the remaining President, Senator of Sarambur College, and other dignitaries, students, and friends. It is with profound happiness I appreciate and congratulate. all who involved in conducting this ruby jubilee celebration of ffrc i believe ffrc is god's intervention in kerala christian churches because it was the first attempt in our churches in kerala this is a celebration of what god has done in the history of the church there are two things i want to express one thing our dr m j joseph patchens this uh, felicitation speech it was so good and full of history of this institution full of history i think we have to keep this in our book this in our book because the new generation they don't know how it has begun and continue yeah the second thing is i start with bike and second this is a quotation church is a sacrament of the ultimate union with god and the unity of human kind see also our ffrc consists of different churches it is an ultimate union with god and with humanity the same thing is saying in uppsala assembly of wcc is this a quote church is a sign of the coming unity of human kind coming unity of human kind ffrc emblem that is the i think mentioned in the earlier ffrc emblem we see it is written to unite all things in christ so i wish and this is a great wish from my heart from this three churches for this last 40 years we cannot move or join with other churches in kerala the senate of sarambur senate president our apram dinimeni is here he is a man of religious studies i hope at this time of his time this will happen in kerala with other churches also in uh, genesis chapter 42 we read and asked joseph in egypt he is asking to his brother very sure youngest brother i want to see him you go there and bring that youngest one here there are many youngest brothers in kerala 
Why can we move little more from uh, 1980 after these 40 years? After these 40 years. Thank you very much. I wish all success to this FFRRC program. Thank you, dear Rachan, and thank you for your profound vision for FFRRC. And we have with us Right Reverend Dr. Royce Manoj Victor, the former professor of Old Testament at FFRRC, and representing the faculty of FFRRC, our dear Tirumeni will give his felicitations and uh, Tirumeni's message will be on, uh, on online. Yeah. Most revered heads of churches, Dr. Mara Prem, President, Senator of Sarambur College, Chairman FFRRC, Co-Chairman, the Registrar, Faculty, and Students. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I also bring greetings from the CSI Diocese of Malabar. I'm extremely happy to be with you as we celebrate the Ruby year of the foundation of the FFRRC. Jubilee is always an occasion of thanksgiving and celebration. We remember with gratitude the countless many, those living and those now in glory, who established and fostered this great institution FFRRC. Let us give thanks to the Lord for the lives and ministry of the leaders of the past who responded positively to the need of the society. I have a long-standing relationship with the FFRRC. It's all started in the year 1997 when I joined FFRRC for my MTH studies in the field of Old Testament. Later, when I was serving in the teaching faculty of the Kerala United Theological Seminary, Tiruvannandabaram, I had the opportunity to be a part of the faculty of the FFRRC. I do cherish the wonderful memories of my association with the FFRRC. As we all know, the FFRRC is the forerunner in the field of federated faculties in India, especially under the Senate of Sarambur College. It is a fruit of the brave initiative taken by the Kerala churches as an outward expression and witness of their ecumenical journey in the 1970s. Past 40 years, the FFRRC has been providing high-class higher education facilities to people from all over the country. FFRRC welcomed people of all denominations, languages, and regions, and treated them all equally. Today, we have grown as one of the largest higher education centers under the Senate of Sarampur College. Although there are weaknesses one can point out on FFRRC like lack of a single campus, issues of library and so on and so on. The FFRRC still attracts students from all over India, mainly because of the strength of the faculty. One of the other major attractions of FFRRC is its low fee structure. The fee structure helped many students to fulfill their dream of higher education. I wish and pray that may the Almighty provide the necessary wisdom and courage to the FFRRC and its leadership to carry forward the ecumenical vision of its founders and continue to deliver quality education, quality higher education to the poor and the needy of our country. 
wish you all a very happy ruby year celebration and a blessed christmas god bless you all thank you so much tirumeni for your words we have dr jayasree kb with us she is one of our alumni and presently she serves as a principal of amazing grace bible seminary kottarakara representing ffrs alumni dr jayasree will give her felicitations praise lord oh my soul all my inmost being praise his holy name praise lord oh my soul forget not all his benefits most honorable dignitaries my gurus chairperson co chairpersons registrar deans faculty students and staffs of federated faculty for research in religion and culture i greet all of you in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ it's an amazing moment and blessed to be part of this historical event of celebrating ruby jubilee year then or now for me to be in ffrrc is a feel of being back at home i thank god for such an incredible institution god has given in my theological pursuit and i'm sure if this institution was not there certainly surely i have not done either my mth or my doctorate first time i came to seminary in 2004 after completing my bd and in the following year with my husband gerald pravin we joined in 2005 6 for mth in new testament and old testament respectively and we completed our studies but can't forget the moments that we were being here in this place i remember and thank god for all those significant people those who were there in the seminary in those days reverend dr right reverend dr pl john panikirachin and my gurus then father dr john matthews now his grace dr yuhan mar demetrius and my teacher dr reverend dr abraham philipachin who is also still here very especially i thank god for the opportunities that god has given in my life and opening new doors of my learning through all of them and i can't forget father dr reggi mathiochen who had widely opened my passion for the intertestamental studies and arch- biblical archaeology and that was the very reason why we had our mth curriculum revision in utc bangalore i suggested some more courses from the same area of research and achin as well as reverend dr david joy achin have included tremendous work adding the formation of the revised mth syllabus for the new testament students including those subjects from archaeology words cannot truly count the scholarship and contribution of frrc faculty within its territory as well as the larger spectrum of the theological world including senate of serampur i joined for my doctoral program here with my husband again for old testament and at the end of our course i think we were the first batch four of us with us we received course completion certificate in the time of our valedictory meeting because we had submitted our thesis on the third year it is just because of our faculty members their encouragement motivation guidance and the time that they have spared for us i think there is no senate college without at least one faculty being formed from frrc interactions with my classmates like alex sachin sushil sachin following my batch mat like mothi sachin who is already here have also enlightened our learning recalling the moments that we had here in the classes library in the seminar hall tempting me to be back in this place for some more time my guide of mth right reverend dr matthew smar macarios then 
Reverend Dr. Vargis Matai, was a kind critic and also appreciated all my works. And I got first class for my thesis. People from FFRRC, I met after my studies. I felt always the belonging and the scholarship that they have shared and the ecumenical outlook they have imparted in every place where they were. The seminary libraries in OTS, KUTS, MTTS, and the opportunity provide, opportunities provided for us to be there and use in its maximum have given us opportunity to spend more time there in the libraries. I can't also forget the tours that we had. We traveled to Bangalore for ECCI for the seminars, but on, in the train, we enjoyed so much in the travel. We traveled to Uti, us, the faculty, the FRC family, to Adirapalli, and those travels are truly unforgettable. There are some important people that I can't forget, our dear friend, Darli, um, that I really always see her as the most friendly figure in FRRC. For anything that we approach her, she will never send us back disappointed. A smiling face always reflect, is a reflection of FRRC itself. I remember the time of very Reverend Dr. K.G. Potanachan, who graciously arranged the atmosphere for my learning in those days. And in my doctoral studies, I was awarded with a Senate scholarship and without which I would have not completed my course. And I also remember this time, the reflections that we had here, the classes, the personal interactions, as well as the friendly relationship the faculty and students maintained in this place. I also acknowledge my German teacher here. The well-disciplined seminary atmosphere with utmost care for the theological formations and contributions are the specialities of FRRC. The faculty members who are prominent scholars and writers, writing and publishing varieties of reflections. It's also a motivation to the upcoming scholars. I'm 100% sure that the person who comes, joins in FFRRC will never go from this place empty-headed. All receiving kind empty tears, most sanctifying your tears, so gracious KUTS campus, always gave the feeling of a very warm theological endure. Personally, from the bottom of my heart, I felt always the taste of heaven in this place. It's a place of zero discrimination on the basis of caste, color, church, gender of, or of any kind. FFRRC always appreciated anything that is noble and praiseworthy. I pray and wish that this institution may continue from glory to glory, fulfilling the vision till the day of the Lord. Once again, I express my heartfelt thanks to the present registrar and all those who were behind me who have given a word to invite me into this place. I take it as a great honor and appreciation in all my works, in all my uh, theological teachings, any place I go, if someone asks me who is the best place to do theological education in India, my suggestion is always FFRRC. I thank God and praise God. Thank you so much. May God bless all. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your nostalgic memories about FFRRC. And at this time, we are going to release our commemorative magazine. I call upon Father Dr. Joss John Achen, the chief editor of the magazine and former registrar of FFRRC to introduce the volume. And after the introduction, I request His Grace, Dr. Zacharias Mar Aprem Tirmeni to release the volume. And I also request Reverend Dr. Kurvila George to please receive the first copy. Good afternoon to you all. Most respected dignitaries, distinguished guests, dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. 
It's a great privilege for me to greet you all on this auspicious occasion of the Ruby Jubilee celebration of FFRS. At this point, I do remember with great gratitude the pioneers and forerunners of FFRRC for their ecumenical vision and mission. I do believe that FFRRC could promote theological education in India with ecumenical spirit and collaboration for the last 40 years. As a research center, FFRRC has been promoting admirable theological education and research programs in its academic mission. It has been a model for ecumenical fraternity and theological collaboration amidst theological and doctrinal differences. It becomes a unique theological institution in India with its ec ecumenical spirit and cooperation. Well, let me take this opportunity to introduce with immense joy and pleasure, the book which commemorates the Ruby year celebration of FFRC. It's an effort to address the pandemic and post-pandemic situation with faith and trust in God. Towards a relevant ministry in the post-pandemic period, in biblical, theological, and historical ministerial perspective is the theme of this book. There are more than 12 articles which address the post-pandemic realities from biblical, theological, historical, and ministerial perspectives. The book is entitled as Witnessing Together 40 Years of Ecumenical Theological Pilgrimage. It is published by ISPCK and will be available for the public in the month of January 2022. Special word of appreciation goes to Professor Dr. Susan Jones and Reverend Deacon Zerin Johnson, who have graciously done the editing work and cover page design respectively. I would like to extend a word of gratitude to the executive committee and the editorial board members especially to the chairperson, co-chairpersons, registrar, and treasurer of FFRRC. I'm sure that the publication of this book would be a great achievement and contribution of FFRRC to the ecumenical theological education in India. I am really proud to be part of this institution and its Ruby Jubilee celebration. Wishing you all the very best, may I request his Grace, Dr. Sakriyas Maraprem, to release this book by handing over it to Dr. Kurivela George. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, Tirmini, for releasing the magazine. On this August occasion, FFRS is proud to recognize and appreciate the significant contributions of our former and present faculty members who have played a vital role in steering our institution. We would like to honor them by presenting mementos. May I call upon our dear registrar, Reverend Dr. Koshi B. Sachin to present the mementos. See, the faculty members are the backbone of FFRRC. All have agreed to come, but due to physical illness, some former faculty members are not able to come today. But we have prepared mementos for all former and present faculty members. We will present them. Those who are present here will receive the Mamindo and those who are not, we will uh, give to them. Yeah. Now, Metropolitan Sakriya, Dr. Sakriya Smara Prindimini, I request Reverend Pramo Sakraya Achen to present the Mamindo to Sakriya Srimin. Mm -hmm. hmm. And uh, 
Dr. Dr. M.J. Joseph Bachchan, Bachchan is a pioneer of the institution, of the Sarfarasi. So I request Father Dr. Jacob Matthew Bachchan to uh, present M.J. Joseph Bachchan with a shawl and uh, Darley, Mrs. Darley, to come and give a memento to us. Now, Reverend Dr. P. L. John Panikarach, Father Darin, to come. Reverend Dr. Kurivala George, Reverend Dr. Kurivala George, Reverend Rejoy. Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George. Reverend Dr. Sabu Philip E. Professor Dr. Joseph Vargis. Professor Dr. Joseph Vargis. Sir was our German teacher. He taught me German. <laughs> I studied German and English in under him. <laughs> Professor Casey Jor, our English teacher. Dr. Susan John is not here? I think so. Dr. Susan John is an English teacher and she edited our book. Professor Dr. Susan John. Her husband, Professor John, is also here. Thank, uh, welcome, John. <laughs> Reverend Father Dr. T.I. Vargi Sachin. Mm -hmm. Abraham is not here. Abraham Gulachan went. P.P. Bari Sachin. Abraham is not here. 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 At present, they are only this much. Now I call upon the present faculty members. Father Dr. Reggie Matthew. Reverend Dr. V. S. Vargis. Reverend Dr. V. S. Vargis. Father Dr. Nainanke George. Nainanke George. Father Dr. Shadi P. John, Santoyo, I don't know. Father Dr. Shadi P. John. Reverend Dr. George Joseph Kuriwala. Reverend Dr. George Joseph Kuriwala. Reverend Father Dr. Josh John. Josh John. Reverend Father Dr. Jacob Matthew. Reverend Father Dr. John Thomas Karingatil. Reverend Dr. Joseph Daniel. Reverend Dr. Bibin Lal Elvi. Bibin Lal Elvi. Reverend Father Dr. Felix Johannan, Illa, Mandir. Reverend Dr. Moti Varki is not here. Reverend Father Dr. Rajigi is not here. Reverend Dr. John Philip A.
Reverend Father Dr. Bijesh Philip. Father Dr. Bijesh Philip. Reverend Sajivaris Atanila. Reverend Dr. M.D. Cherian, absent. Reverend Dr. Abraham Skaria. Reverend Abraham Skaria. And last, lastly, me. <laughs> for presenting the mementos. Christmas is a season of love, joy, and peace. That was a message brought to us by the angels when they sang the first carol, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. We will now have our Christmas carol singing. I call upon the students of FFRRC to present the Christmas carols. Mani, please arrange this pair. Please <laughs>
thank you friends for those beautiful carols it is a blessing to have with us his grace dr zacharias mar aprem tirumeni he is a familiar figure and a very friendly figure to all of us at ffrrc tirumeni serves as the president of senate of serampur and as the metropolitan of adu diocese of orthodox syrian church a beloved tirumeni will give us the christmas message respected chairperson father dr rajiv matthews most beloved and respected mj joseph hachan eminent scholars and professors of ffrrc and dear students first of all i would like to express my sincere gratitude to invite me for this glorious occasion of the ruby celebration of ffrrc a wonder for me because it is formed out of three different traditions and joseph hajan was telling how to a certain extent painful what was it is the history behind that i don't want to explain that he were a lot for that that now ffrrc is the best federated faculty under the center of sarampur college and on behalf of the master the all officers of the senator sarampur i express their appreciation and their congratulation for this great ecumenical theological institution along with the ruby celebration we are celebrating the christmas just now we heard beautiful carol and the meanings everybody knows how it express the joy and pleasure of joy and anandam i, I would like to say that term anandam pleasure and anandam panikirichum poi anandam is a sanskrit word english equivalent is bliss joy is pleasure that's different pleasure and anandam anandam we attain we achieve we experience while we are in constant touch with the reality that's why in navadashati tradition they use the term satchit anandam satchit anandam to define the absolute reality let me come back to my responsibility give a small christmas message and i know that each of us each one of us well versed in the meaning and even ready to speak about christmas in hours and hours but i would like to bring to your attention just three ideas which won't be a new uh, idea for you but for me i think it is new see what is really happen through this incarnation through incarnation the word of god try to make a mature humanity make or create or reform or remold a mature humanity mature in the sense maturity not on the basis of mere intellectual or rational emphasis or orientation rather something which transcends even our intellectual and rational faculty that's why he he um uh, incarnated in the world actually that was against the laws 
of the existing world. So God transcends the system. Sometimes God transcends the order which he himself created. Why he, he transcend or he neglect the order? It is not because of any fall from the creator. Rather, it is the humanity that made all chaos. See, while prior to the creation, it was chaos. But God made it as cosmos. But through the sin of man, sin of humanity, that order became disorder. So he himself, the, the humanity himself changed the order to disorder. And in order to make it as ordered again, God transcends the intellectual or rational analysis or comprehension or methodology. So this is very important in this, in this uh, situation, this age, because we are living at a such and such postmodern era. Even in this postmodern era, we are concentrating much on rationality and our own intellectual ability. So there are certain realities which transcends or that cannot be comprehended on the basis of intellectual or rational um, uh, faculty. So in such a situation, God always select or God always try to intervene in the society in a different manner. So incarnation itself is a, an even with a difference. Even with a difference. So whenever we want to intervene in the issues of the people, whenever we want to interfere in the issues of the society, then you, we also have to think about an alternative mother, something which, which, which has a difference. That's what I think uh, Bhavadri Mani also said, a new dimension uh, to the responsibility of FFRRC. So through the incarnation or through the birth of Christ, he tried to made a, a try to make a mature humanity, mature in the sense transcending the rational and intellectual uh, paradigm alone. Secondly, Jesus Christ, Son of God, He became a beacon of light to the people, to the world. See why? In the beginning, the first chapter of Genesis narrates like this, the first day God created the light. And again in the fourth day, he created sun and moon and all other uh, what um, illumining um, bodies of the sky. So that means God created light or God in Malayalam it is Velicham. God Velicham Undagate. God created light. I don't know what is an equivalent meaning to Velicham in English. But Sanskrit there is a word Jodi. It is something like that. God created light in the first day. But on the four, in the fourth day he created sun and moon. So it is clear prior to the creation of sun and moon, some sort of light was there in the beginning. And according to the Eastern Fathers, it is called uncreated light. So in the light itself, there are two categories, uncreated light and created light. What is the, what is the difference? The source of uncreated light is the eternal light that is God. And it is imparting to the creation 
through the word of god undagatte ennu kalpikkunnu through the word of god that is so so the the, the source of the in, uh, uncreated light is god himself whereas the created god has something different maybe from sun moon or something else so through incarnation the son of god the word of god try to illumine the whole creation in a different manner why we know the condition of the society at the time so whenever society is passing through these kinds of difficulties and uncertainties what we need is uncreated light the splendor of uncreated light that we need now the india world is passing through the crisis of pandemic and uh, related other difficult situations across the globe and even humanity doesn't know what is going to happen and how to handle all this difficult situation but remember we have an uncreated light so instead of running after the created light we have to go back to the uncreated light or the source of uncreated light again it says it is not because of any rational or intellectual ability it is not because of any scientific um about studies or methodology of course scientific methodology is essential for a standard uh, investigation for any branch of academics we need that but along that we have to remember we have to keep in our mind that uncreated light is something great and we have to see or we have to search for that uncreated light and that uncreated light can be seen in our neighbor the one who is sitting along with us that's what rigveda mandala 10 purusha sukta says there is a sukta called samani sukta actually that sukta is a kind of uh, dialogue between a guru and a shishya and the guru asked the shishya or uh, shishya asked the guru what is the highest knowledge in the knowledge in the world what is the highest knowledge guru said there are three types of knowledge first one is called called knowledge in surya vijnana knowledge or vijnana means our own understanding about the external world physical world that we can experience through our senses and we can get it from our teachers and from our own perceptions so the knowledge about the external world is called vijnana or knowledge this is the primary step primary level then comes the next one what is that that is wisdom knowledge um jnana first one is vijnana or knowledge second is called jnana or wisdom that is different wisdom or jnana is some sort of intuition intuitive knowledge if you want to say some kind of intuition our own understanding about the reality or that which that which transcend the uh, physical world that will come under this category of jnana so vijnana is knowledge the primary step the next one is called jnana or wisdom and the the final one highest one so this disciple was very curious about hearing this oh is there any other knowledge greater than the knowledge about god then the master said yes that is called sakyanam that is called sakyanam then what is sakyanam sakyanam is your understanding about 
the one who is sitting near to you, the one who is traveling along with you, the one who stays next to your door, that is Saknyanam. So we have Vijnanam, and as pastors and ministers of the church, we have knowledge about the ultimate, we can say about Trinity, and we know several things about the Christological or other doctrines, all systematic theologies. So we are very trained in that. But we failed to see the uncreated light who is sitting along with us, who is within, uh, who is along with us, and that is called Sajnana. So Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the incarnated one, he is a man of Sajnana. That's why throughout his teaching, we can see in the gospel how Jesus handled various situations, various context how we handle even there are occasions he questioned the authority of mosaic law and there are occasions he sidelined the traditional method of looking at the society this is because of his ability to realize to experience this uncreated light in each of each one who is near to him. And that is Saknyana. And that is, in a way, the presence of uncreated light. So when we celebrate Christmas, we need the ability to get, to receive, to experience, to see the uncreated light in others. And it has several dimensions. I don't want to go into that. Just one more point. Incarnation is a kind of establishing a new system of justice. We know several types of justice. Legal justice, social justice, and divine justice. We know the difference also. Legal justice is justice based on law. Social justice is something different. Equal importance to all, the right of each and every citizen to stay in a society without any kind of discrimination. But divine justice is something different. When we read the story of Joseph, Revelation to Joseph, and there is a sentence in Malayalam. It is like this: Joseph Nidimanaga gonda avade regasathil uvikshi kivanda yarai. Since Joseph is a just man, man of justice, he didn't allow Mary to exposed in the society. He was he is a Jew, and according to Jewish law, he has to present this lady to the leaders of the community. And as per the law, they will penalize her. But he was not do, he, he didn't do that. Why? That is divine justice. Divine justice always transcends legal justice and even social justice. So the implication of incarnation has this meaning. We are always, even especially yeah, Orthodox group, Orthodox Achans are here with their permission. We are always saying about legal justice, 1934 constitution and other things. Of course, that is also very essential for the smooth functioning of the society. But there are occasions we have to transcend even legal justice and social justice. We need divine justice. So that is very important in Christian ministry and it is revealed very clearly through Jesus Christ, the incarnation of the Word of God. 
let me stop here. I, I, I shared very simple thoughts with you. Think about a mature humanity, a humanity which run not only for in intellectual or rational ability alone. Second, try to experience the presence of the uncreated light within the society and within us and the one who is along with us. Third one, try to experience divine justice which transcends legal justice and social justice. Karu, my words, best wishes and I wish you a very, very uh, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Once again, on behalf of the entire Senate of Sarambu College, I extend all success and wishes to FFRRC. Thank you, Tirimeni, for the beautiful message and thank you for unraveling the depth of the event of incarnation and for uh, giving us the challenge to experience the uncreated light and to experience the divine justice around us. Thank you, Thirmeni. At this time, we wish to offer farewell to two of our dear professors who have officially retired from their positions but continue to be guiding lights of our institution. May I call upon the treasurer of FFRRC, Reverend Dr. Bibin Lala Chen, to honor our dear professors, Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George Achan and Father Dr. John Abraham Konat Achan with words of farewell. Tambur College, Chairman of FFRRC, Reverend Dr. Reggie Matthew Achan. Registrar Reverend Dr. Koshi P. Vargi Sachin, co-chairmen and all the dignitaries and the respected one. It's a time to give farewell to Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George Achan and Reverend Dr. John Abraham Konat Achan. Let me begin with Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George Achan. Achan is from Chengannu. He's a professor of Old Testament. He was the member of Faith and Order Commission of World Council of Churches. He was the professor of Gurugul Lutheran Theological College, a chairperson of Academic Council of the Senate of Sarambur College, and the member of Research Committee and Executive Member of Senate of Sarambur. Was the co-chairman and the chairman of FFRRC. He was the principal of Marthoma Theological Seminary. He was the member of translation of Malayalam Bible in relation with the Bible Society of India. He has published many books and scholarly articles. I thank God for the life and ministry of Reverend Dr. Prakash K. George Achan. Achan, thank you very much for your service and what are the things you have done for FFRRC. Everything you have done is remembered and continue to be remembered. By these words, I extend all the wishes to you your retirement life and to your ministry, continue ministry. Thank you, Chua Reverend Dr. Father John Sabraham Konat Achan. He is from a Konat family. It is a Malpan family. He is from the famous Pamba Kuda Valuable member. His, this is his mother church. Internationally accepted Syriac manuscripts belongs to his family. He did his higher studies at Belgium. He is a teacher of worship, liturgy, canon law, and Eastern church history. He was the priestly trustee of the Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church. Former bishop of a uh, former principal of Marthoma Orthodox, Theolo Orthodox Theological Seminary, 
He was the co-chairman and the chairman of FFRRC. Presently, Achin is working as the principal secretary of Matthews Didian Catholic Baba. Achin, in his absence, we are really proud of you, proud of you in your ministry and what are the things you have done for towards FFRRC. Ministry which, have, which you have done, rendered towards FFRRC is remembered and continue to be remembered. By these words, we extend all the wishes to your continuing ministry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Achan. Thank you, Achan, for those words of farewell. We have come to the closing part of a grand service. I request Reverend Dr. Joseph Daniel Achan, the Dean of MTH Studies, to give the vote of thanks. Respected Chairman of FFRRC, Reverend Father Dr. Reggie Matthew, His Eminence, the President of uh, the Senate of Sarambur, Dr. Sakaria Smar Afrem, respected dignitaries on the dais, respected Achins, ladies and gentlemen. We are at the close of uh, the 40th year celebrations of uh, the Federated Faculty for Research in Religion and Culture. Today is another red letter day in the annals of Federated Faculty for Research in Religion and Culture, which started its academic research pilgrimage 40 years ago. An institution is much more than the bricks and mortar with which it is built. From the humblest to the highest functionary and the generations of students and teachers who make FFRRC into a thriving theological research center in India. Today, our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy that overflows within us as we recall the pathway that we traveled in, those, in these 40 years by God's inestimable grace. So I take this opportunity to the first and foremost to thank God Almighty for his providence and benevolence which has enabled our federated faculty to reach new laurels of heights through these 40 years of its academic research pilgrimage. We would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to His Eminence, His Holiness, Basilios Marthoma Matthews II Metropolitan, Third Malangara Metropolitan and Catholicos of the East of the Malangara Orthodox Korean Church. The Chief Guest of Honor for this day and our FFRRC fraternity member. For the thought-provoking address, the wholehearted support and prayer, and above all, his suggestion to equip our students to wipe out the tears of the vulnerable community in our society is a standard for this Christmas season message to us. You are kind enough to accept our invitation in spite of your entire busy schedule and grace this occasion. Your presence and your prayers is a special blessings and honor to our FFRRC. A big thank you to Eminence, Eminence His Holiness, Basilius Marthoma Matthews III. His Grace, Dr. Theodosius Marthoma, Metropolitan of the Malangara Marthoma Syrian Church, his blessed message inspired us, helped us to brainstorm further to deepen the academic and research ambience in our FFRRC, particularly in this time of post-COVID and post-modern social systems. We will continue to look forward to you, Tirumeni, for your prayer, guidance, and further inspiration. Thank you, Tirumeni, again very much for your kind message this morning. 
gratitude is the fairest bosom which springs from the soul. Every celebration is an experience. The external fades away and the internal lingers and echoes in the most depths of our hearts. You bishop his grace, Karmaraj Rasalam, your inspiring message touched our hearts and it echoes in the most depth of our hearts. You reminded us that the 40 years of our pilgrimage is the pilgrimage of our three churches, ecumenical pilgrimage. We thank you, Tirumeni, and the moderator of the Church of South India. We would like to thank His Grace, Dr. Sakarias Maraprem, the President of the Senate of Sarambur College, for his blissful Christmas message for 2021. His guidance, continued guidance, blessings and prayers are torch for us to bear light to our pathways. Your message guide us to look forward to enhance our ecumenical fraternity and to deepen our piety through jnana, vijnana and satnana. A big thank you to the many. Coming to the FFRRC family, love includes everyone and excludes none. We owe our special thanks to our chairman and our spiritual father and the rogue support of FFRRC, Reverend Father Dr. Reggie Matthew, for his entire leadership, prayers, and blessings. Thank you, Achim. The purpose of human life is to make God's face smile. As C.S. Lewis says, our court chairman, chairman, Reverend Dr. V.S. Vergis and Reverend Dr. David Joy, through their leadership, make us happy and God's face smile. Thank you, both of them, for their wonderful messages. Thanks are due to uh, Reverend Father Dr. Nain and George Achen, the academic dean, sorry, the doctoral academic dean. Uh, thank you, Achen, for your blissful presence and blessing us with your prayers. A huge thank you is due to Reverend Father Dr. Joe Joan, the editor of uh, Drubir Celebration Volume, and uh, Reverend Dr. Kuduvila Achen for receiving uh, the book uh, from us. Thank you, both of them. Indeed, I am proud to say that uh, the richness and the treasure of uh, the FFRRC is uh, our faculty and the former faculty and members and the registrars and the office bearers of the FFRRC. By rep for representing uh, the pioneers of the FFRRC, MJ Joseph Achen helped us to move with the Cine camera from 1980 to present, which catches all ups and downs, greatness and heights of the FFRRC. Representative of the office bearers of uh, uh, FFRRC, our former <coughs> registrar, Reverend Dr. John Panikar, helped us, enlightened us with a new vision and a new challenge to include more members to FFRRC. Thank you, Achen. Representative of the faculty of FFRRC, Right Reverend Dr. Ruiz Manoj Victor, enlightened us with uh, new challenges of building more love community in our society through our actions. Thank you, Tirumeni, for your words. And our, form, our alumni representative, Dr. Jayashri B., uh, enlightened us and really uh, helped us to, re to look ourselves and to have a self-introspection of ourselves, how uh, we were able to illuminate others, especially the students. Thank you, Jayashree, for your kind words. I'm proud to say that we, the FFRRC family, work as a team with a family spirit. We thank you, the office bearers, executive committee members, staff, DTS scholars, and MTS students. 
I take this opportunity to thank the most revered people who nurtured FFRRC and built FFRRC in the rock of faith. They are our former faculty members and the office bearers of uh, uh, FFRRC. They are Reverend Dr. M.J. Joseph, Reverend Dr. John Panikarachan, Reverend Dr. K.M. Georgetson, Reverend Dr. Abraham Guruvalachan, Reverend Dr. Prakash K. Georgetson, and Reverend Dr. George Guruvalachan, and others who are also present here. And uh, thank you, Achans, for your blissful presence for this uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, coming to uh, our special thanks to the choir members, its leaders, leader uh, Reverend Shijoi Sakaria, worship, commi worship committee members uh, led by uh, Reverend uh, Joseph Joan, uh, MTTS students, staff, FFRRC staff, and uh, MTTS uh, faculty, and uh, all the faculty members of the three seminaries and all who toil hard to make today's event a great event and a, a red day in the annals of the history of uh, Federated Faculty for Research and Religion and Culture. So thank you again, uh, once again. I think uh, it will be uh, quite um, ungrateful if I mention the registrar of FFRRC. He is the mastermind behind all the organizations and all the arrangements of uh, this uh, uh, event. I think the whole credit for the greatness of this event goes to uh, Reverend Dr. Koshipi Vergi Sachin. Of course, he's my guru too. Thank you, Achan, on behalf of the FFRRC. We are indebted to you. Thank you very much, Achan. So a huge thank you to all our students and all the participants. May God bless us. Wish you all a blessed uh, and happy uh, New Year and Christmas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Achan, for the vote of thanks. Now I request Father Dr. Nainan K. George, the Dean of Doctoral Studies, to close the service with a word of prayer. And I also request of Tirmeni, His Grace, Dr. Zacharias Mara Prem, to give the benediction. Let us all stand, please, for concluding prayer and benediction. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one true God, we bow our hearts before thee and beseech to thy divinity. O Lord, we are here in your presence to give thanks to thee for the wonderful existence of FFRRC for the last 40 years. O God, we bless your name for the blessings you have showered upon everybody who are associated with FFRRC and gave leadership to this institution. We, O oh Lord, especially remember the great pioneers who took initiative to establish such an ecumenical theological training program that envisaged the ecumenical unity within the churches of India, and especially the three churches, Orthodox, Marthom, and CSI church traditions. O oh Lord, in you we see the unity in diversity, as you are one essence and three persons. Now, O oh Lord, we pray for the founding faculty members, chairpersons, co-chairpersons, registrars, deans, HODs, and faculty members who served FFRRC time to time. We acknowledge their services and contributions with great gratitude, O oh Lord. We pray for the Senate of Sarampur College, for their assistance and help in making all theological attempts initiated by the FFRRC remarkable one. O oh Lord, we place all the students who have passed out from FFRRC and served different churches as pastors, evangelists, and theological mentors in your hands. Bless them, O oh Lord, with your, with your wisdom. Now we come, O oh Lord, across the end of this Ruby Year celebration program. We are grateful to Thee, O oh Lord, for all the distinguished dignitaries who are physically and virtually present to bless this occasion. We beseech Thee, O oh Lord, to bless them. 
We pray for the organizers of today's program, especially our registrar, who took much pain for organizing this. Bless him with heavenly blessings, O Lord. We pray for the chairperson, co-chairpersons, deans, HODs, and the faculty members who serve FFRRC at present. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit to continue the legacy of this institution. We pray for our students. Give them, O Lord, your wisdom to pursue their studies. We remember FFRRC office staff. Give them all assistance, O Lord. We pray for Indian churches, O Lord, help all the church leaders to make their respective churches to bear witness to Christ in the world. O Lord, give them courage and strength and strengthen them in facing our challenges evolving every day. We pray for the entire world, eliminate social evils, religious fundamentalism, fanaticism, Wars, discord, and pandemic viruses from it, O oh Lord. Once again, we beseech thy grace to bless us. We lift up glory and honor to thee, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the love of God the Father and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, the whole FFRC faculty and all those who work for the successful completion of this program now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Few announcements, please. Mr. Philip Sam is a DTS second year student, uh, compared this program. Uh, thank you, Philip. And also, uh, we food is arranged for all of us. It is in the uh, main.